All right, Libra, Libra, this is your last reading in the desert for you. Or well, at least this desert for some time. Um, let's see. I'm going to be using the Gods and Titans guidebook. This is going to be for Libra, Sun, Moon, and Rising, and Venus. Libra, please keep in mind that not everything I say may resonate, and what does not resonate for you may resonate for someone else. If the card doesn't apply, then let it fly, baby. All right. Okay, let's just jump into your reading. I'm going to shuffle this deck quickly, and then while I do that, Libra, I want you to ask yourself what your energy is like today. Say it three times out loud, preferably out loud. Or if you're around people, then say it out loud in your mind. Let your front temporal bone, your cranium, your exterior, left and right, all communicate together as one synchronized mind, as one wise mind, okay? Oh, Libra, fellow Librans, Libran Justice League, I'm going to miss doing this reading for you in the desert. All right, let's get let's get it. What is? Oh, there we go. Wow, Libra, you got a new bis. You got protection. You're highly protected, Libra. Anubis. Ooh, Anubis. Anubis. Okay, let's see what Anubis has to say. So, grief and suffering are a natural part of life. Know that you are loved and protected at this time, and most importantly, Libra, at all times. When you go down into the womb-like environment of the tombs built in ancient Egypt, the gods still seem to live and breathe in the frescoes upon the earthen walls. Among them, there is always the dark, majestic jackal head, signifying the presence of Anubis, god of the underworld and mummification. So he might look fearsome at first, but this jackal god takes care, great care of the tender new souls who have passed into the next world. So, in other words, the afterlife. So this is about knowing that death will inevitably fall upon all of us at one point or another in our life. But death shouldn't be a scary or feared event. If anything... You should come to a place of mind where death is just another process of your spiritual life. It's a beautiful process, in fact. I would consider it to be a reincarnation, a phoenix rising from the ashes, a rebirth of self, okay? It can be a compilation of many different spiritual practices and intentions, so I just want you to know, Libra, that you're highly protected and cared for if it's within a life or death or the afterlife. Okay, so now I'm going to be using the field tarot to clarify your message. Okay, so we have the magician, the ten of wands. Yeah, look at that. Look at the sun in the background. Jeez. Okay, so anything that has been burdening you or weighing you down, Libra, take this as an opportunity to just release, right? Open up your hands, open up your soul, your heart. Breathe in positivity and exhale negativity, right? 
and all that love that you're calibrating and regenerating within self share with the people that love you wow yeah we were just talking about death being comfortable with the idea of death look at that yeah so death may have been a burdening thought in your life in the previous uh days weeks months years but you've taken back the power back from that narrative now you are thinking of death as a beautiful spiritual event right when people pass when people have funerals we come we boast to their memories to their legacy in this life and we wish them good in the afterlife right we wish them blessings and miracles and that they would truly be in a better place that they continue to live a happy joyous life in another spiritual realm that is um a better place for them Okay, so we have the Eight of Cups, we have the Princess of Cups, and the Nine of Swords. So to become to a place where you're emotionally centered, physically and spiritually, you see how he's sitting just like me. I'm really tapping into your energy today, today, guys. What are you fearful of, Libra? Ask yourself. What are insecurities you have? What are you fearful of? Have you been digging deep and doing the introspection? Have you been retreating and overthinking in your mind? Have you been going and escaping the presence to live in the past or the future, right? Let me break it to you. There's nothing in the past that you can change, right? What has happened has happened and history shows that you can't change or alter the past unless you can teleport right unless you can teleport there's nothing you can do to change the past what you can do is you can be mindful of the present you can be mindful of the future or you can be mindful of the present for the future and you can let the future come when it's time what should libra head towards wow Okay, so we have the High Priestess and the King of Discs. Head towards power within wisdom. Head towards um, knowledge. Head towards older souls. Your ancestors who are most likely more wise and intuitive than you are. Head towards experience. Head towards futility. Head towards happy abundance and joy. Head towards your intuition. Head towards a place of power you're a natural born leader libra you already know this you like to share the reaps of your rewards with others right you sit on your throne you sit on with your crown on but you're also crowning other people around you right you share the reins and this is why people love libras Libras are not afraid or insecure about sharing the limelight because they know that there's more than enough to go around. And why not have built a community of union than to just be in this high horse, right? It's like you're rolling in on your high horse. Like, it just sounds stupid. Get off your high horse. If anything, sit on your throne and share that chair or bring others like and similar inequality to other people that support you, love you, and are generally in the best intention thought process for you. What should Libra avoid? Wow, this popped up for Pisces as well. Four of Cups and the Wheel of Fortune. Avoid as as strange as this sounds, avoid over meditating, avoid obsessing over perhaps astral projection, 
over connecting with uh, others on a more spiritual level. This all has to be a very organic process and you'll know when it's your time to fulfill these duties of spirituality, of mental, behavioral, and physical health, okay? So it's like you have to be, you have to prepare yourself for when your timing has come, which I am seeing that is in more in the near future than later, right? You have to come to a place where you're understood as being reliable, responsible, and trustworthy. When you've reached this level of spirituality, the divine process will start working and spinning for you, right? It's going to start working for you, not by you, not through you, but for you. This is that flow state I love to talk about. When things are happening slower, like when, when time is frozen around you, right? When time it has slowed down, when people, places, and things are talking, walking, and vibing at lower frequencies, and you have the ability to read between the lines, you have the ability to read between people's energies, this is why people are psychic and intuitive. It's because they can read between the lines of situations, right? Before it actually comes. What's Libra's final outcome? Okay, what's Libra's final outcome? Oh, Libra, Libra, baby. Look at this, you got the sun and the five of wands. So this is that vibrancy, that beautiful bright light, competition. People view you as competition, Libra, okay? Just continue to be your authentic, true self. And don't worry about the competition. You are confidence, you are happy, you are joyous, you are free. Stick to this energy and all will be well. All right, I'm going to end your reading right there, Libra. If this message resonated, make sure you comment down below. Give this video a like before you exit. Share this video with your loved ones so I can reach all the Libra legions in the world. And most importantly, Libra, do not forget to live out your best. Let go. Much love. Stay pure and blessed, Libra. Bye-bye.